wrong side to the slot. It was a dream, but now, alhamdulillah, it's a reality. My name is Abdul Kareem. I'm 27 years old and I've been practicing Islam for 10 years and I was born a Muslim. I grew up South London, uh, from Brixton originally, and then uh, my family moved to the outskirts of Brixton, Herne Hill. My origin, um, my father was born in Jamaica and uh, he came over from the Caribbean um, in the seven, early, seven, early 60s. And my mother was uh, born in the, in, in the UK and she's from Birmingham originally and her parents were born in, J in the Caribbean Jamaica and they came over in the 50s or 60s if I'm not mistaken. Um, alhamdulillah I grew up in a very very, uh, I had a very good upbringing. Uh, my father he really tried because of the way how he grew up he really tried with me and um, to give me something that he, he never had which was um, a good upbringing, a father figure and um, Islam, you know, um, he really tried his hard to, uh, to teach me that and to teach my, my, my younger sister. Um, I went to, when I, when growing up, I, I went to a Muslim school, primary school, um, called Amuntada, um, and that was quite exciting. It was a nice, it's nice to be in that setting. All I was around was Muslims 24 7 growing up, um, to typical learning Quran, Islamic studies, plus academics. Uh, and then I left there and then I went to for the last part of my uh, primary, primary school years and a little bit into my secondary I went to another Muslim school Balan, Balan Prep and uh, that was predominantly Asian whereas the first one was Arab and kind of mixed with blacks and whatnot. Balan was kind of Asian and then um, I left that school and then I went to a normal state school in Streatham, Dunraven and um, that's when you know my life started to I started to get exposed to things that I wasn't really used to growing up even though around certain settings I would see it but actually being in the thick of things was uh, when I hit secondary school um, I met a couple people in secondary school who lived around my area and their lifestyle and my lifestyle were two parallels they were very different but what um what, what was different and what was exciting about their lifestyle was that they, they, they had the room to do what they want. And for me, that was exciting to kind of look at and say like, wow, these people are restricted and I really want to be like that. So I started to hang around uh, certain areas, around Hearn Hill. And for me, what, what started to happen was it started out playing football, you know, when you're playing football, you socialise and whatnot. And then from there after football, you're chilling out, you're talking and you're hearing certain things. And for me, I used to hear a lot of things that I wasn't used to and then it started to become normal to a, you find yourself partaking in it after a football game um, you're going to you go into the state you chill out certain people are smoking weed certain people are talking and dancing about so, certain people are just talking you've got girls running up and down dancing and you went as a Muslim growing up and you're not used to those things this lifestyle and certain things you start to see becomes intriguing you know and you change you make an internal decision as well like wow do i want this or do i not want this and a lot of us especially in the society in the west because of the old woman influences with music um your peer peer pressure is a big thing as well we tend to be swayed towards things we're not supposed to do so um for me my upbringing was very very islamic very islamic even though we had that like, caribbean culture and whatnot it's very very islamic but at the age of I would say 13 I made that decision internally that you know I wanted to live a certain lifestyle and I want to aspire to be like a musician and be I want to say the hardest person on road but my influences drew me into that direction um, I remember being on the estate and I would see like the older youths on the estate and they would have nice cars and they would have a lot of money and whatnot. And for me, it was like, it wasn't super intriguing, but it was like, raw. is that possible? Um, I was fortunate, alhamdulillah, that I still used to hang around. Uh, my, older brother used to live, my older brother used to live on the estate. And what he used to do was, when he used to see me, he used to drag me into his house, because I've got older brother, but I've got different mums, but um, same dad. He used to drag me in his house and he used to show me different things. So he used to show me about, uh, life 
and even though he wasn't the strongest and most practicing of Muslims, he used to show me little bits of the Quran and whatnot. And for me, that was that was something different because everyone on the estate was always talking about music, girls, who got robbed, who's robbing who, who's got this, who's got that. And then when I was when my brother used to take me away from that, I was getting exposed to different things. And we used to sit down, we used to talk about government, we used to talk about a lot of things that would make my mindset kind of focused and taken out of that circle that everyone was in. So for me, I was always fortunate that there was always, if it's not my brother, it's people that my dad knew, there was always people around me that would sit me down and talk to me about things which would make me think in a different perspective than everyone else. And I was always I was always intrigued about uh, the way how society ran. And the reason why was that before my dad left the country, um, I was, what, 11 years old. And then he sat me down and he played, he played a, a tape to me. And that tape was called The Shadows. Now, as an 11 year old, watching, listening to that story, you know, it would, do, it would do something to a young person. And really what it did was made me aware that we're living in a society that is really corrupt. You know, and there are people with agendas who uh, have, a, have, have a, a goal to, 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 to corrupt people and uh, make financial gain of anyone they can. So as a young age, I was always aware of that. So even though I was with my friends and doing what young people do, um, I always had that in mind. And every time I used to see something new and whatnot, it used to, like new technology or little things, I always used to think, what's happening? And um, what confirmed it as well, that this, this stuff wasn't the conspiracy theories. Um, on the actual tape, they, they spoke about The Simpsons and how it was affiliated with Freemasonry and whatnot. And for me, um, I remember The Simpsons was on in my house and there was a scene where Mr. Burns, he was sick or something. And then the, 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 like the camera zoomed, on, zoomed in onto Mr. Burns' skin and it said Freemasons rule. Now, when I saw that, that blew my mind as a, as, as a youngster, that blew my mind like, you know what? Maybe life isn't as, as plain sailing as I thought it was. So um, I, I always had that awareness. I always wanted to, you know, think deep. And um, alhamdulillah, um, the Allah SWT gave me the opportunity to start thinking deep. Um, I want to just touch upon something which, as well, was um, was a, a massive sort of like it had a massive impact on me. It was um, in two thousand and through two thousand and two. Early 2002, um, I went on holiday, you know, me and my cousin, we went on holiday to Mallorca. And um, while I was there and was having a good time and whatnot, I was walking past the beach and they had like a stand, and on the stand there was like a TV. And I just saw carnage. And what that was, was, um, it wasn't early 2002, late 2002. And what that was, was um, Twin Towers. <laughs> That incident blew my mind. I thought, right, what is this? And when I when I phoned my mum and I spoke to her, she was like, "Oh, they're blaming on Muslims." And as as me, I always knew I was Muslim. Even though I was growing up and I was around certain people, I never hid my Islam. So for me, seeing that and then it being blamed on Muslims kind of made me stand out. Like, hold on, wow, I am Muslim. The people around now are not Muslim, but I am Muslim. And when I came out to London, um, and I went back to school. I remember everyone was talking about it. Ah, oh, rah, September 11th. Ah, oh, rah, Muslims, this. And everyone would turn to me. Rah, Kareem, you're Muslim. Rah, what, what are you on all that? And um, it always made me stand out. So for that, I always knew I was Muslim. You know, that I couldn't hide that. Especially my name was all my father. He, named me, he gave me a Muslim name and he changed our surname to a, a Muslim surname. So for me, I always knew I was Muslim. So when that incident happened, it made me realise that... Um, I always, I'm always going to stand out and never blend in. I'll never be a, J a Jermaine Jackson or I'll never be a Leroy, Leroy Anderson. My name is Abdul Kareem Abdullah. And for that, that's my name. I'm always going to stand out. People always going to ask me, why, if you're Jamaican, why have you always got a name like that? So I had to kind of develop a firm resolve of who I am. And, you know, know that, okay, I'm a Muslim. And I may not be representing Islam properly, but I am a Muslim. And then... Um, some other incidents happened related to that with my family and whatnot, which kind of made me think, okay, you know, life is serious. So, um, alhamdulillah, um, due to those experiences, it pushed me towards 
Islam, not intentionally but unintentionally, pushed me to push me towards Islam. And Alhamdulillah, um, what what happened was I had to make a decision: what am I going to do with my life? And do I want to be someone who followed Islam, or do I want to be someone that followed my desires? Alhamdulillah, uh, Islam has totally uh, transformed my life. Um, yeah, it's tra transformed my life to a point where, you know, I'm petrified to go back to the lifestyle I used to live. You know, um, my pe my parents, by dishonouring my parents, you know, not really practising my deen, um, living a lifestyle which I wasn't raised in, you know, and this is important for me to, to stress for myself is that, I wasn't raised that, I wasn't raised, you know, being on the street, I wasn't raised trying to, you know, uh, call people to Jahannam by doing uh, acts which, you know, are, you know, in contrary to Islam, I wasn't raised that way, so, Alhamdulillah, I'm back to how my parents raised me, um, and being an asset to my community, um, you know, and learning about Islam, and learning about the importance of Islam, because when I grew up, even though I was raised a Muslim, I didn't understand how important it was to practice Islam. And this is, for me, this is what, you know, a lot of people who are born Muslim, they don't understand the importance of Islam and, it, and, and how it can change your life and also how it can save you in the Akhirah. So things like praying Salah, fasting the month of Ramadan, reading Quran, um, giving Zakat, all these things, they mean something. And, what, and for me, what it means is that I've got a chance to try it and make it to Jannah, try and make it to Jannah, and that's that's not that's not something that's not something small, you know. Um, beforehand, how I was living my life, um, I didn't I wasn't I didn't feel accountable. That's the word. I didn't feel accountable to Allah. I didn't feel accountable for my actions, <laughs> even though I knew it didn't resonate in, in whatever I did. I only lived to please myself and please uh, my desires. And uh, the reality is. You know that's not how we're supposed to live. That's not that's not how we're supposed to live our life. And for me, um, when I lost one Tala, it felt like he um, lifted the veil from my eyes and he, he took he took a seal away from my heart when I realized Islam was the truth. Because I grew up in Islam and I knew Islam was I was a Muslim, but it, it wasn't concrete that Islam was the truth. And then when I realized Islam was the religion of truth and that. Allah had saved me and Allah had given me an opportunity to make it to Jannah and save from the hellfire. You know, it was an enlightening experience and something that, you know, I hold on to nearly every day in my life, no matter if I'm up or down, <laughs> that there is a chance to get to Jannah. Um, Allah SWT has removed me from company that I used to keep who was not befitting for a Muslim to have, you know. Um, instead of getting called to go to a rave or to do something silly, uh, alhamdulillah, I might get a call to go to the masjid or to do something productive, you know. So the reality of my life is that 90% or 100% of it is geared towards pleasing Allah to the best of my ability. And the only way that I'll, I'm able to do that is with good companionship and a mind frame, a mind frame that is Islamic. And it, you know, no one's perfect. Everyone has their ups and downs, and I'm, I'm, I fit into that category. So, alhamdulillah, Islam's given me a vision and a scope, and that vision is to try and get to Jannah. What advice have you got to Muslims and non-Muslims regarding Islam? For the Muslims, for the Muslims out there, um, it's important that a person understands who their Lord is. I'm not just mean, oh, you know, who Allah is. But you really research Tawheed, you know, in its entirety. You spend your time and you exert much effort in learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can. Learn everything you know need to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and you spend time in developing your aqidah. That's learning about the prophets um, and their stories because the, the, these stories are, are treasured in, in the Quran and you can take benefit from these stories. Learn about the angels. Learn about the books, the Quran, the Torah. Learn about what, what's come before us and what the message is and the consistent message. Um, as well, learn about Yom Al Qiyamah and the punishments and the rewards. And make that firm in your heart, inshallah ta'ala. This is very important for the Muslim um, to understand that there's a last day 
and that every single thing we do is being recorded. Everything. And it will be presented in front of us and there's no denying it. So know about your Qiyamah, the punishments, the rewards. And know, especially Muslims, listen to this. Your Qiyamah, if you're successful, the greatest reward the Muslim, the believer will get is to see Allah. So strive for Jannah and try and run away from Jahannam even though it's difficult. And also learn about the, com the pro companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The Prophet as well and his companions. Understand who they are. Understand what they're about. Look at their life and you can take some amazing examples and look at some inspiring stories that will motivate you. And um, yeah, that will, that, that will shape your Islam. But please, you know, if you if you have the ability, your aqidah, tawheed, and looking at the Prophet peace be upon him and the companions and take them as examples and really try and implement the good that they implemented in their life, in your life. And um, for the non-Muslims, read the Quran. Read it with an open mind, you know, and don't look at the Muslim who's a bad example, but go to a masjid read some Islamic literature and try and understand what Islam is about. Also, I would advise that um, if you have the ability to watch, you know, if you're from a Christian background or an agnostic or an atheist background, there are videos and DVDs out there that really will teach you Islam and you can understand the basics and you can understand that there is a creator. And when you understand who that creator is and what that creator isn't, things will make more sense. And also look at Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, there's a man by the name of Michael H. Hart. He's a historian. And he ranked Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, as the world's most influential man. Now, Michael H. Hart's not a Muslim. And he put him in front of people like uh, Hitler, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, Julius Caesar. Prophet Muhammad was ranked number one. Now, that's a non-Muslim saying that. Research why. Why was this man... The most influential man in history according to non-muslims and it's undisputed and then that will give you an understanding why we call prophet muhammad peace be upon, peace be upon him the messenger of allah jazakallah khairu islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh